Today, I wanna to walk you through how to make a graduated color wheel using Adobe Illustrator. So this is a pretty complex illustration. Let me show you what it looks like. This illustration is featured on page 85 of Ellen Lupton's book called uh, graphic design, the new basics. In this particular configuration of a graduated color wheel was designed by Robert Lewis, who is one of uh, Ellen Lupton's students. At any rate, they don't all look like this. However, this one is particularly nice looking with the missing segments because it's nice to be able to see different colors surrounded by white. That's pretty helpful. And I wanna show you the different steps that you'll have to take to achieve that. We're going to break it down into six steps to make it a little bit easier. Uh, and they have to follow in this order. So the first thing you're going to need to do is set up two circles like this. One of them small, one of them big. These two circles define your inner and outer areas. Your second step is to use Illustrator's amazing blend feature, which looks at two different elements and it associates them and then makes uh, steps in between. It can either be continuous color or a specified number of steps. In our case, we're gonna use the number of steps that give us every single one of uh, the rings of color. The next thing is to add one single line like this, one single straight line, and then the next step is to repeat that line all the way around the center until you get your 12 wedges. So each of these wedges is gonna contain an individual color, and then inside the wedge from top to bottom, you're gonna put your range of color inside. So your next step then after doing this is to use the live paint tool to do this right here. We're gonna use actually two things in this step, the live paint tool, and we're gonna use uh, Illustrator's uh, specific uh, swatch palettes from the library that comes pre-installed with Adobe Illustrator. And then from there, we, we continue to use the live paint tool, but then we end up using Adobe Illustrator's color, uh, color guide palette uh, to find the associated values, the associated tints and shades um, from right from Illustrator. And then we just apply those. So at this point, this last step of the process, you're doing a lot of, uh, a lot of clicking between the, the palette and your, um, your artwork here, your illustration segments. But um, it goes pretty quick. It's the same thing over and over, but it is fairly labor intensive. So here are the six steps contained on individual artboards. So the first thing you're gonna do is create a new square document. And let's use inches as the increments. Let's make this uh, 10 inches by 10 inches. So here's the dialog box. You enter in 10 inches, 10 inches, uh, just one artboard. And uh, that's it. That's the only thing you need to do here. 10 inches by 10 inches, one artboard, click create. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is save this file. We're going to do a ton of work in this file. Just get in the habit of saving it right now. So right now, before you do anything else, get rid of this thing right here that says untitled hyphen one. We want to give this file a name and we want to put this file somewhere. All right, so go file, save as, and put it into your directory. Okay, so the tool you're gonna to use for this step is the ellipse tool over here in the toolbar. Click, hold, you see all these different uh, tools that you can use here, these shape tools, but we're gonna use ellipse. This tool is pretty cool because you can just click in one spot in your artboard, any spot, it doesn't matter, and then you get this dialog box here that allows you to pick your dimensions. So um, we're gonna make the inner circle uh, a half an inch. So you just type in 0.5, and then you can just hit tab in your keyboard to go to the next field. Pretty nice. Click OK. Now, this is not in the center of the artboard. Let's move it to the center of the artboard using these align features up here in the control bar. Right here, you want to make sure it says align to artboard. OK, so once it says align to artboard, you can then use the centering tools right here. So horizontal align center, uh, vertical align center. It's right in the middle of the artboard. Okay, so let's do that again for our larger circle. So the ellipse again, click, and this one is going to be eight inches, hit tab, eight, hit tab, click OK, there it is. And let's do the same thing here where we center it up. And it's already going to keep the same setting that we selected earlier, aligned to artboard. So now we can just hit center, center, 
And now we see it's covering up our, our, the circle that we just made. So let's remove the fill color. So you can see the fill colors down here in the toolbar. By default, it has a fill color of white and a black stroke uh, set to one pixel, which you can see over here, one pixel for the stroke. In this case, we're going to leave the stroke on and we're going to turn the fill color off. Click this white box down here to grab or bring forward the fill color and then click the none uh, right here to remove the fill and then do the same thing from this circle. Okay, step number two. Now, before you start step number two, save your work. Okay, so just go up to file, save. It's going to save. It's going to get rid of that little asterisk up there. That asterisk tells you that your file is unsaved. You always want to just continually be saving your work. All right. Now, the next step is making that blend. So Illustrator has a feature where you associate two different elements and then make a blend in between the two. You have to select them. So we're going to select them using the regular select tool. Click select, hold shift, click select. We have two things selected now. And now you go up to object, um, and this is a pretty cool feature. Actually, I'm going to make my uh, image a little smaller here for this. Uh, so object, blend, um, and here you're going to want to just click make. And now it just made a single step in between the two. Now we have to specify some things about this. So you have to go back up. So this is a multi-step part right here. So go up to object. Uh, back to blend and now to blend options. So this is cool right here. If you wanted, you could make a continuous gradient using smooth colors, uh, or you could choose specified distance and choose a certain increment in between. And for whatever reason, by default, it just picked this right here and it just uh, applied it. So it's just applying these circles in succession all the way down. It's a pretty cool trick, but for our purposes right now, we're gonna pick specified steps. Okay, making my head a little bigger again. All right, so for this particular graduated color wheel, we need 14 segments, or excuse me, 14 rings. And right now we have one ring, we have two rings. So over here where it says one, it's given us one division. So you just hit up on the keyboard to just add them in. I'm not actually typing anything. I'm just hitting up on the keyboard until we get, let's see, how many do we have right now? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, yeah, so we have 14, 14 rings. Uh, so it will say 13 here in specified steps. You click OK, and that step is done. This looks really good so far. OK, this part is very important. All right, with the blended object selected. So you can see that the entirety of it's selected. You have the outer ring, the inner ring, and then these are not selected. So these rings that were just produced by the blend function are not actual paths that we can use for our purposes. So you have to expand it. So you go up to object and back down to blend again and choose expand, which turns all of those rings into actual paths. Step number three is maybe the easiest step in this whole process. So you grab the line segment tool, and you hover over this spot right here, right here, and you click, hold, drag, and hold shift while you do this, and just go all the way up to the outer line right here, and then you release, and that's it. That step is done. Let's check something though. So grab the regular select tool, um, so this is selected with the selection tool, and click transform, and you can see the height of the element right there. So it's a three, it's a 3.75 inch line segment. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. It's snapped into position. It's ready for us to copy it and duplicate it and fan it around uh, the entire uh, color wheel to give us all of our wedges. So this next step is pretty magical. This is an elusive trick that people always forget how to do. I always have to look this up. There are so many different blog posts online and tutorials about how to do this particular step in Adobe Illustrator. It's extremely useful and it, it's, it's, it involves multiple steps. So it's pretty hard to remember. And it also involves things that aren't found up here in the menu. So you have to do them with your keyboard. 
So let me show you how to do that. So the first thing you're going to need to do is select your segment. Make sure your segment is selected with the regular select tool. Now get the rotate tool. So the rotate tool is over here, uh, but you can just click R on the keyboard to get it. So I'm just going to click R. Now, this part is very critical. So you have to do this particular step in order to get this to work. Down here, when you hover in the center, now right here, this is the spot that we're gonna rotate from. We don't wanna rotate from any other reference point other than this spot right here, because these are gonna fan around the entire set of rings. So right here, now this is this is not in, the, uh, in any of the menus, so you have to do this this way. You hold Option on the keyboard, and click that particular spot. You get this rotate menu right here, this rotate dialog box. And here you get to enter a certain amount of degrees that you want your uh, element to rotate. And since we, since we option clicked in the center of the circle, that's gonna be our reference point. You can see that it's lit up right there, uh, highlighted with cyan. Now you type in 30. And you see what it did is it just rotated this particular element 30 degrees, but we don't want it to just move this particular element. We actually want it to duplicate it. So this is really cool right here. Instead of clicking OK, which would just commit this change right here, you click copy and it, it just duplicates it. So it leaves the one, the reference one in position. It makes another one at 30 degrees, pivoting from this spot. And then this part right here is magical. If you just hit Command D on the keyboard, it repeats that same last action. So that last thing that you just did, it bottles it up, it captures it, and it just spits it back out onto the artboard right here. And really quickly, you just hit Command D over and over and over, and you just complete your wedges for this uh, color wheel. That is such a cool trick. It's really worth remembering that, although it is really hard to remember that. So right now, what I'm going to do is put on the screen something that you can just take a screenshot of and just keep it in your camera roll in case you want to reference it later. So here are the instructions for how to do that. Now, as you can see from the reference image, this particular step is pretty complicated. So a lot of stuff happens right here. So you have to do these in the right order in order to get this to work. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is open up your swatches palette. I'm just gonna uh, open it up right here. And now we're gonna delete everything that's in there. So you can just click the folder and click the trash can to delete it. Do the same thing here, delete it. We don't need any of these. In fact, you can just click this uh, flyout menu right here and, and click select all unused colors. That's actually a quicker way to do it. So you select all those and just click the trash can. They all go away. Now we need to populate this swatch palette with uh, the colors that we're gonna use for our color wheel. So you go to open swatch library and here is where you can ask Illustrator to load into uh, your document all sorts of uh, colors that are already prearranged for you or pre-picked according to certain specifications. In this case, we're going to go to scientific. It's kind of ridiculous that they call this scientific, but right here is where you get access to some things like analogous, complementary, split complementary. In our case, we're just picking analogous. So click analogous. Here are all 12 of our colors. It's the first color that's listed. So these are analogous colors. So in each of these folders, uh, you have your starting hue, and then you have two colors that relate to it. This is really nice. So the first color in each of these folders, those are the things that we're gonna use. Uh, this is really nice. So you can click that folder, click that folder, click that folder, click that folder on down, and it's gonna add these to your swatches. Now this is important. You want these to show up in your swatches so you can close out of this. You want these to be here and ready to go in your swatches. So now you can just put your swatches palette back. Okay, this next step is tricky. There are a lot of things involved here. So save your work and then select all. So command A on the keyboard, it selects everything. It selects all those rings. It selects all those wedges. It selects all the line work. And now we're gonna remove the stroke. So it's, uh, up until now it's had a black stroke. So we're gonna remove that because we don't actually want that showing up in our next step. 
So now, now that you see just this, it's just the line, it's just the paths. It's just the vector paths. There's no stroke, there's nothing attached to them. Now you go over to the toolbar and grab the live paint bucket. This is cool. Well, when you hover over this element, you can see it's ready to accept or it's ready to be turned into a live paint group. So you do that, you click it, and it's gonna give you this warning and say that this is this is a, a complex uh, structure here. You, you just click OK. Yes, we know it is. And now you can open up your swatches palette here. Grab, um, let's do the red. So red, so red is our first first swatch. So we're just gonna click red here. That's full saturation red. And then it is the wedge that is right here, right here. Okay, so this uh, this tool is really cool because what it does is it just fills intersected shapes. So these are not individual segments that are free standing shapes. These are intersections. These things are created by intersecting paths. All you have to do is just click and you can fill them in. It's pretty amazing. You can hit left and right on the keyboard. I'm just sort of demoing how this tool works. You can hit left or right on the keyboard and it's gonna cycle through the folder that you're in. So let me just undo that. Okay, for this part of the process, it's a lot of clicking. So you're gonna wanna start in the right spot. You're gonna wanna make sure that you're clicking each individual piece the right way. Um, and you wanna just pay attention to your reference image. In my case, it's the one right here in my textbook beside me. So I'm gonna continue to look down at this particular one. In this case, I know that this is the red wedge right here. Our outermost ring is filled. We skip one, the next one is filled. Skip one, the next one is filled. And we're gonna do this all the way down into the center uh, to where it stops. So each of these is gonna get colored with seven segments. And here I'm gonna pick this orange one and go and just do the next one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And over and over. And we're just filling these with the full saturation because we're gonna come back in the next step and use another one of Illustrator's tools to help us find the exact tints and shades that we want for uh, each of these different hues. Okay. That's the last one. As you can see, that takes a little bit of time to complete. Um, and this is the kind of thing that if you mess it up the first time, you can just undo it. Uh, during this demo, I had to stop this video a couple times and undo it just to go back and uh, start from the beginning uh, because I kept clicking in the wrong spots. You're gonna wanna pay attention to your reference image, keep looking at your book, keep counting those segments, and make sure that you're filling up each of these wedges with the right color. Again, you're just using the first color from each of these. And you can see that those colors actually repeat. This is a uh, a depiction of basically a color uh, color wheel right here because you can see these different colors repeat this way. Showing that continuity all the way around in the connectedness uh, amongst uh, analogous colors. Okay, so here we are at the end of this process. This is our last step in the process, step number six. All right, at this point, you're gonna need the swatches palette and you will want to put it in a convenient spot. And then you're also going to need the color guide, which is under window, color guide. Open that up. Just kind of move this to a place where it's going to be handy for you also. You're going to be referring to both of these here. All right, now the color guide is a pretty cool tool. It shows us a full range. You can already see what it's doing. It's taking a source color, which is represented by this arrow, this center color, actually it's the top one. The top one is the reference color. And then it's expanding it out into all of its tints, into all of its shades. Pretty cool. Uh, you can also have it show you uh, vertically different color combinations. Like if you click this drop down, you can have it show you, uh, for example, monochromatic. So it starts with the source color here, reduces saturation uh, vertically, and then horizontally, 
it adds black and it adds white to make the tints and the shades. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it set to monochromatic. It's just less distraction. Uh, and you notice when you click on your different reference colors over here, it changes what's in the color guide. And this is exactly where you get your tints and your shades from. So I'm going to uh, rearrange this a little so I have these things nicely stacked. We're going to grab that same live paint bucket. And you're going to just go and do the reds, just go around the circle, just like how we did a little bit ago. But this is going to take a lot of clicking back and forth. All right, so you click red. So your live paint bucket is full of red. And your color guide is highlighted here. So what you do is you pick your next shade and from you're going to identify your centermost point. So it's always going to be the fourth one in your sequence of seven segments. And this one is going to remain full saturation, but you're going to start to change the colors by going over to the color guide and picking your different tints and shades all the way down. And there we have a perfect gradation on that particular wedge. That wedge is done. Now you go back up to this, uh, up to your swatches palette, reset your reference color right here, and the live paint bucket is still selected. And then you're gonna identify your centermost segment. So this one is not gonna change. And now you just change the other ones. Uh, and sometimes you have to click it uh, sometimes I find that you have to click it two times in order to get it to accept the fill color. Uh, at least maybe it's just a problem with my mouse. Um, but sometimes I have to click it twice just to make sure it's changed. So there you go. That's how you do this part of the process. You just do that over and over and over. And it takes a bit of time. This is a lot of clicking. And if you make a mistake like I just did right there, I got out of sequence, you just hit undo a couple of times, start over. And while I was editing this, I happened to notice that I forgot to recolor one of the segments and you can see it right there. It's one shade too dark. And uh, now I can't stop looking at it, but during this whole process, I never even noticed it. Okay, it's done. If there's a shorter way to do this, I don't know it, um, but it's done and it works and it looks pretty good. So this is just sitting here on my artboard as a live paint group, but now you can select it and copy it. So command C on the keyboard and go to another application. In my case, I'm gonna to go to Adobe InDesign and here I have a document started about color and color theory and you can just paste it right into your document as vector art. So command V on the keyboard and there it places it into the document. Hold shift, move it into position wherever you want it. It's, it's perfectly scalable. It's ready to be used however you want. You can make it smaller. Um, you could also um, ungroup it if you'd ever need to do this. I don't know why you would need to do this, but you can ungroup it and it exposes the individual segments. So thanks for following along until the end. Good luck with yours. I suggest doing each of the steps very slowly, making sure you're clicking on the right elements as you go and getting really, really comfortable uh, using the undo feature in Adobe Illustrator because you will end up uh, having to back up and undo certain things that you didn't intend to do. Keep looking at your reference image and just keep paying attention to where the colors change and where the uh, where the center uh, segment is at in each of the wedges. And it should go pretty smoothly. Okay, good luck. Thanks for watching this video.